Welcome back to The Wardrobe. This is where I present my podcast radio show from, The Pod 20. And it's also where I record audiobooks. And there's one just gone on sale, which is terrific. It's called Spitfire Final Flight, the incredible story of 36 Burmese Spitfires and the extraordinary plan to steal one. It's by D.G. Lee. And I worked with D.G. Lee, the author, or David as I know him. And we worked backwards and forwards and he sent me photos and emails and whatever. We never actually even spoke on the phone. So it was great having the opportunity to talk to him on Zoom. Now in the run up to this, he was so nervous. So was the last author uh, of an audio book I did, which was uh, Malcolm Archibald from the Jack Windrush series. He was no going into this. Authors, you know, they don't like being out there. They're, it's all up here and it's, it's all about writing. But it's got to be done. And do you know what? I think he kind of enjoyed it. Because he's talking about something he's very passionate about. A cracking story. So here's my chat with the author D.G. Lee. And stick around to the end. Because at the end, I'll tell you how you can get free downloads of this terrific audiobook. Here he is, D.G. Lee. And let's talk about the book. Well, I know it as an audiobook. I'm guessing it was a book first, but I'm sure you'll fill in the blanks for me. The title, it's a long title. Well, this is a short title and a subtitle. The short title is Spitfire Final Flight. And when I saw on ACX that I could audition for a thing that's got Spitfires in, I'm thinking, I'm your man. Because I find that kind of thing exciting because it's got everything. It's got the history. It's got the, the, the daring do, you know, the boy's adventure, that kind of thing. So Spitfire Final Flight, the incredible story of 36 Burmese Spitfires and the extraordinary plan to steal one. There's the book finished just by the title. Finished. <laughs> That's right. Long enough. Actually, though, it's not a long audio book. It only came out, I think, just over two hours. So it's nice for a... Well, it needs to be. It is. Once you know, that story it, starts, it's right to the finish. It's, it's well, very, it's a it's very, very efficient. And, um, but that length lends itself perfectly to a summer road trip, I think. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's about, you know, a lot, a lot of some of them. There's, I'm working on one at the moment. It's 18 hours long. And I'm thinking, who's got 18 hours? But In lockdown, you have. <laughs> maybe you have. Maybe you have. So tell me about the inspiration for this, um, because it is based on two real life events, one about the Burmese Spitfires and one about a bloke landing a plane. Actually, no, three really, isn't there? Because there's, anyway, take us through the, the, the it, things it, that inspired it. Yeah, it's a combination of a lot of things that just all come together. But I think it's easier if I talk about what the book, I know it's about Spitfires, please buy mm -hmm. it if you like Spitfires, but there is a, a message hidden in the book that you wouldn't normally see, but it's there and it's age. It's the fountain of youth. I know it's a Spitfire book, but it's about an elderly pensioner. Well, pensioners are elderly, but a pensioner approaching his century year that in his day was a fantastic fighter pilot, test pilot. He's got all that knowledge yeah. of, of his youth. And now he's approaching his century. He's got Alzheimer's. So he's, he's closed in in himself is a prisoner of his own body and once you put him in spitfire he gets his youth back it's the when he closes that canopy and it clicks closed it's the same as hearing the bars a few beginning bars of your favorite song that takes you back to a summer when you was a teenager or dancing with your wife it, it instantly takes you back to that moment so where he suffers from alzheimer's when he hears that click of the canopy the switch in his brain, the drills he had day in and day out, it's just all come back to him. And obviously we know how the book ends, we're not going to give it away. But with the Spitfire engine da -da 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 -da, vibrating, is it his hand shaking from Alzheimer's and old age tremoring? But when he takes that yoke, he feels the energy of the Spitfire flow through him and it just energizes him with the youth and the passion and he becomes himself. The Spitfire completes him, and he completes that completes the Spitfire. Without each other, they are just shells. 
but they're complete. They, they, they belong together. So he's approaching his century year and he belongs in that cockpit and the Spitfire belongs in the air. And you know that when the pair of them are together, they are unstoppable. Yeah, and they um, certainly are. And, and the other good thing about it is as well, you know, because he's, he's rescued the beginning of the book. I don't want to give too much away, but at the beginning of the book, he's kind of rescued from a care home. You know, everybody he loves, he's outlived, he's alone, yeah, and he's in care. And there's, there's, um, there's a dignity and respect that is not there 100% for people in care homes. Yet, he was part of the generation that beat the Nazis, and then afterwards he was a test pilot testing planes that helped end the Cold War, or, or was part of the Cold War. I mean, this was a guy who demands respect. And so it was nice to see that part of it too, to remind you that people in care homes, they've lived a life and they've done things and they've contributed. And Amazing you things. need to remember that. Yeah, and that, that was nice too. And the, the relationship he had with his carer was good because she had that respect for him. That's, what... that's my third character. The, yeah. Tom's the first character, the main character. Spitfire is the second character that comes alive as much as Tom does. And then Susan, yeah, the carer. I, it's, the other characters in the book just nudge the story along. But yeah. those three, they, they push the story. They are the story. And as you know, by the time we get near the end of the book, um, I read it through again and I cried. I knew the ending and I cried. It's a there, happy, is, there is happiness. a part in the book. Once again, I don't want to give it away. But I, I narrated the book and there isn't a part, and I didn't see it coming. There is a part okay. in the book that. I started crying and just had to stop recording. And I went into the living room and I said to my wife, I said, you won't believe what just happened. And I had to sit down with her and get myself together and then come back in here and start recording again because I couldn't use the bit I'd just done. It's very I think emotional. it's because I've written Tom and he connects with us through our youth. He gains that youth again, his spirit. And I, at the, the the age that we might read this at, it might be people our age that read this. There's a story for everyone, but we always want our youth again. We want to go back to that time where we was in the park and we put our arms out and we run around pretending to be airplanes. And you have that freedom and spirit. And I think we connect with Tom throughout the book as he regenerates. Each, each stage of that book, he comes out of his shell and he comes out and he becomes himself as when he was just end of the teens he's just vibrant again and he completes himself and the plane is just the plane's back in the sky because obviously they, the plane starts off in a crate it's also buried so where he is in the nursing home shut off and it's the nursing home is brown and dark and gloomy by the end of the book we're up in the sky blue sky and it, you're free you're not closed in and the same with the spitfire in the crate it starts off in the crate but it's built and it becomes free. It, it, when it's built, it points at the sky. A Spitfire points at the sky. It wants Even on the ground, the yeah. It wants to be in the sky. <laughs> so it's a, it's a case of out and up. It's, it's the freedom. And they give each other the freedom. And it's the journey that we get there too as well. Let's get back to my first question, which right. is, which is the real life events that inspired this story. That would be the German teenager, 19 years old. Um, I think I have, it was four years when I wrote this book ago. And I think it was 1987, if the facts are wrong, please forgive me. But it's back in the 80s, 87. And he flew 500 miles. He's only just passed his private PPA or private pilot license. And he flew 500 miles through Cold War, the Russian air defense, right into Moscow. Red. They say Red Square, but he actually landed just near Red Square because the people wouldn't get out of his way. <laughs> so he landed on the bridge next to Red Square. But yeah, he flew through 500 miles of air defense at the height of the Cold War. Absolutely incredible. And he was only 19, not even a skilled pilot. It's just absolutely incredible. And the story that I came to write, it's all doable. Everything in that book is doable. Where the Spitfire goes against, I think, Mink 29s. Again, it's four years ago. They may be 31s. I think it's Mink 29s that the Burmese Air Force do use. The weapons that they use, I have studied to see how they could attack a Spitfire and how a Spitfire could outmaneuver them. And the Spitfire engine, piston engine, doesn't create enough heat 
for a heat-seeking missile to look onto. It's basically a, a lawnmower in the sky. It, so the heat-seeking missiles are no good. Then you have radar-guided missiles. Um, now, the South American drug runners that fly into Florida, they use special avionics to mask their radar signals. So again, you can outfox those missiles. And as engagements normally take part 25 miles away, you don't see the other plane, it's all guided. Um, so they can't shoot him, the only way they're gonna shoot him down is by cannon fire. Can't yeah. shoot him down by a missile, it's cannon fire. But the Eurojet that we use, because engagements are 25 miles onwards, they actually remove the cannons from Eurofighters because you don't use them, you just use your heat seeking missile. So they removed the cannons from Eurofighters and then they found the plane didn't fly. It's all done by computers, it was out of weight. So instead of putting the cannons back in, they put concrete where the guns were. Wow, just to than, balance it out. Yeah, yeah rather than putting a, a gun or making another gun to go back in, uh, just put some concrete in there and it'd be fine. So a lot of pilots are not trained for dogfighting. They're just trying to push a button from it. Well, a Spitfire is the weapon. And modern technology, the, the fighter plane, F-33 F or the Tomcat F-14, they're designed to deliver the weapon. Where a Spitfire is the weapon, the pilot behind the yoke, he's the weapon. He's training air, air, com, air, cap, uh, air combat maneuvers. And so you've got to get close to that Spitfire to engage him. Uh, and, and you've got to have the right weapons. And if it's a heat seeking, yeah, not forget it because yeah, a Merlin... Yeah, so but Merlin uh, piston engine, it's not hot enough. For, no, for it to... lock onto it. Uh, also, the Spitfire, it's still maneuverable between 80 and 100 miles per hour through in attack parameters. And a modern jet starts to stall. They've got the power, they've got the power, but they haven't got, they can't turn at 100 miles an hour. They're just, they're just useless. So he, you can outmaneuver a jet. And back in 1963, again, it could be wrong. Uh, the British did run tests with Spitfires versus Lightning F3s because we might have gone to war with Indonesia and they use Mustang P-51s and the British government wanted to see could we go, could our fighter jets engage the P-51 Mustangs or would we be in a little bit of trouble? So there were trials. Um, in fact, there was only one Spitfire flying at that time, I believe. I, again, I could be wrong. I think all the other ones were in museums. But there was one over in Wales that they used for conducting weather experiments. And they said, oh, can we borrow your Spitfire? We need, to, we need to fight some F3s to engage them, see how we can combat. And for about a week, the Spitfire, I think I found a couple more. So the, the Spitfires outmaneuvered the F3 Lightnings. Yeah, it wasn't until the second week they found out how they could combat them. But then you're talking about experienced pilots by that time, just coming out at the end of World War II. Near enough. Um, but today, modern jets, uh, the pilots aren't as experienced as day-to-day -day combat with a World War II veteran. And a plane landing on a ship that is not an aircraft carrier, that's possible too, isn't it? I mean, your, yeah. your preparation for this, I mean, I was, I was just a narrator. I just read your words. That's all I did. But you made sure I fully understood. You sent me oh, videos yeah. of, the plane, of a plane landing on a ship. You sent me... Uh, models of, of how the dogfight would go and everything. So I have never been more prepared to read this book and it, it actually enhanced the experience of reading it. But just tell us about landing uh, a plane on a ship that isn't an aircraft carrier. That is possible. I got this, there's the video I showed you, but there was a video, well, photographs I saw before that. A Harrier jump jet had got into trouble, couldn't get back to base of the English Channel somewhere. And they saw a ship and they just boom, plopped themselves down onto it. So I thought, ah, that's interesting. And then I found the video where you have, if a boat can go fast enough into the wind and then the, the plane can come alongside the boat and then you can use the rudder and come over to the top of the boat and then cut the power, drop down, put the lashes on and you've got yourself a plane. And it can be done. And again, when I wrote the book, I, um, I took measurements of the distance between the, we use a boat with cranes. So I took measurements between the cranes, how wide the deck was. Is it possible to land a Spitfire on such a, yeah, I did all the calculations go, yeah, if a pilot's plucky enough, he can uh, give it a go. And of course, these are what these test pilots were. Is, well, uh, I think, oh, was it Eric, Eric Whittle Brown, our, our, our most famous pilot ever, Spitfire pilot. 
he landed the first twin engine plane on an aircraft carrier. Then he was the first person to land a jet onto an aircraft carrier. Holds a record for the, the most different planes flown ever. Because he was during World War II when the technology was just turning over very quickly. Went from propeller planes to jets overnight. And you need test pilots. And I said, right, go in that and tell us what you think. And also he flew captured enemy planes as well. So we could reverse the technology. Um, that's basically what Tom, Tom is based on that character. Is, is that as the is test? Because yeah. yeah. although he was a Spitfire pilot in the war, when the war ended, he, he went on to become a, a test pilot and playing up, flying all kinds of experimental planes and that. And uh, an amazing career. And, and it's the pensioner living next door to you. The guy that yeah. you help put his rubbish out because he's, <laughs> he's, he's shuffling down. There. I'll do that for you. But in his day, yeah. in his day, he was up there fighting for Britain, uh, bigger than life. Absolutely, the pensioners are just incredible. But the, the story incredible. is such such an adventure, like I say, in just over two hours. So surely it lends itself to being a movie. I spoke to I spoke to a movie star and producer yesterday. It's my it was my blog yesterday. It was my Zoom chat yesterday. Her name is Gemma Moore, and she's in this new movie. It's called Host. It's a lockdown movie set on Zoom. The whole it's a horror film set on Zoom. And I, I said to her, because she said, oh, how's the audio books going? And I said, I've, this one has just gone for sale this week. It's called Spitfire Final Flight. You've got to check it out. Make a great movie. She produces movies. So you I know don't know. I saw in it? David that? Jason. I saw David Jason in my head. I thought that as, was, as Tom. Captain Tom, yeah. David Jason. Yeah, good casting. Good casting, yeah. What about the American millionaire? You could take an old Hollywood star, couldn't you? You could take one of the older... Oh, to hell with it. Go for Tom old. Hanks. Don't say old. Okay, you, oh. go for Tom Hanks for The Millionaire. From, from, what do you think? Oh, he's in too many war films. <laughs> he's in too many, saving private rights. I just, just on Fox Tom Hanks, Hanks and well. you're getting fussy, David. <laughs> he's, he's got an Oscar. I don't want someone with two Oscars. Let's get, right. let's get someone fresh. <laughs> and, and how long has the book been out as an actual print or e-book? Four years. Four years. And and has the response been strong, positive? Ticks over. Yeah, it ticks yeah. over. Yeah. Um, when you put a book out there, uh, it, you get criticism and whatnot. But there's another book I wrote, and it was called Loch Ness Monster. Totally different from Spitfires. Loch Ness Monster go to, goes to school. It's written yeah. for children. And someone put, there's no such thing as Loch Ness Monster. One star, boo. And I was like, oh, terrific. Thank you. <laughs> But obviously, the wow. Spitfire stuff, there's a lot of work that went into that Spitfire. The, the, the speed, because well, the escape route that I chose for the Spitfire to take out of Burma yeah. calculated the fuel consumption, the weight of the Spitfire, uh, the maneuvers. The, there's part of that, we won't give it away, but there's certain sections that happen when he does things to avoid things. Yeah. So those places actually exist. There's a bridge, that bridge exists, and it is on the route. Um, and there is a there is an island at a certain distance from Burma's coastline, which is out of their jurisdiction and it's in Bangladesh. So there, there are points that you could get to to escape from Burma. And there was other reasons. I didn't go in other directions because I, I looked where the air defense was and where the barracks were and where borders are fiercely patrolled. And I knew this, I knew I couldn't get the Spitfire out going in that direction. So I just did sit there for a few, I'm surprised I didn't get a knock on my door from the FBI. <laughs> What are you, all these uh, anti-tank missiles? What are you doing with all this stuff? Yeah, we've looked at your Google search history and there's a bit uh, of a worry, yeah. Oh, I, I had to work out so many different routes. Uh, so I'd say there was 10 different routes and then they all had their pluses and minuses and some worked better with the story than other stories. Taking the Spitfire out of Burma on a, on a truck, bits here and a bit there on different trucks or in a boot of a car, it's no fun in that. <laughs> it's, it's right, gotta fly it out. Yeah. Yeah, let's build this bit fire and let's fly it out. And that's had to be the, done. The story of Spitfires being buried in Burma for a while there, that was a real story. And some people actually believe they are there still, don't they? Although others reckon they've debunked it. But well, well what's you, the background you of that. You can't dismiss it until you find them. Yeah. So until you until you find them, you cannot because say they're not this there. Isn't, this isn't part of your story. This is a real thing that this. Yeah. Th th there were there were Burmese Spitfires 
buried in the jungle, some people believe. Yeah, so the enemy wouldn't get their hands on it. And then if we went back towards the Spitfires would be there, ready to be dug out and put into action again. But these were brand new in crates, aren't they? They were shipped out to Burma and never flew. Yep. So that yep, was yep. all part of the story as well, of, of the, there actually could be spit, brand new Spitfires out there in pristine condition. See, the, the Spitfires that we see today flying around, um, I think there's about, again, I could get this wrong, there's three of them that are, a, are original. And the other Spitfires are made up of different bits of plane and then a modern bit of plane, and it's all put together. But if you found those 36 buried Spitfires in Burma, that's the original aircraft. And that's part of the story. We know why he's after them. But those planes are so are more valuable than their weight, although they don't weigh much. Yeah. But an original Spitfire in mint condition, because they're basically just made of paper and bub um, bubble gum. You put that together then the engines would have been oiled up and then sealed. But yeah, they basically would be, as long as they're dry, they'd be ready to go. Oh, well, it, it's a terrific book. And, and as I say, I absolutely loved it. So thanks for choosing me as the narrator for the book. Oh, no, you, was... you, you, nailed, you nailed Tom. You got Tom spot on. And, and this, is, I, this is... Looking at you, I see Tom. I'm surprised I've <laughs> got a scarf on and a <laughs> <laughs> I hope I get. I hope I live to to his age, and I hope I, I get. Well, I'll never be as cool as he's. He's a very very cool hero in this. In this, I nearly said movie because I see it. Because I visualize it is, it? as I was reading it. I I see it. So it's not just words on a on a, on a page to me. It, it is just. Uh, it is. It's just. A, it's a fabulous thing. And and I and whether you you take the the print or the ebook version, or, or whether you decide to to go for the the version. I narrated. I know because I didn't hear the. Your audio. version's better. Your version's no, better. Now you're just saying that. Come on, David. But yeah, no, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. The book. Well, with, yeah, sorry. Well, with the book, when I, well, with the audio, you would say attack helicopter. But in the book, I have the the make, the model, the variant of it. Uh, because when you read something, you, you need all the information come at you. So I put all the information in there and the, the name of the missile and the range that the missile has, and blah, blah, blah. But your audio book that we adjusted for the audio version, it, it's so you can get into the story. You're not sidetracked by, oh, what length is that missile? It, it's, oh, yeah. Missile's coming for the plane. You've got to barrel roll out of the way and get down <laughs> to that jungle. It's It's got to keep going. But the book has a lot more information in there. Uh, but this, the audio, it's, it's just, you can sit back, let the sun shine, and just feel Tom's adventure. You go for that adventure, you join Tom on that adventure, being reborn. It is great. Thanks once again for choosing me for this project. It's called Spitfire, Spitfire Final Flight, the incredible story of 36 Burmese Spitfires and the extraordinary plan to steal one. It's, uh, so it's is a, doable. It is doable. All of it, it the whole doable. book's doable. And so it's uh, the the print book is is Amazon, but the audio book is at audible.co.uk. Audible.co.uk. Still get it through Amazon, I believe. You yeah, can get it through Amazon. And if if someone is is watching this right now and would like a free download, the next twenty people that email me, Graham at MacMedia dot co dot uk g r a h a m and mac media m a c k graham at mac media dot co dot uk the next 20 people that do that i'll send you a free code to get the audiobook for free how's that for a deal can't go on for that <laughs> david thank you very much thank you graham